Hi, this is Jeff Heaton. In this video, I'm going to show you how to decode a merge life rule and see how those hexadecimal strings actually turn into the relatively simple rules that drive a merge life cellular automation. If you're not familiar with it, merge life is an algorithm that I created that evolves cellular automation. However, unlike traditional cellular automa that you might have seen, merge life is capable of evolving many different ones using a genetic algorithm. I didn't design each of these individual cellular automa, rather they were created by a genetic algorithm. In this video, I'm going to give you the somewhat technical description of how Merge Life actually works, specifically how it knows how to create those animations from the hexadecimal rules that make up a Merge Life rule set. You can think of the screen that you're seeing that had those effects on it as, as the universe. It's a grid. It's essentially an image. It has a collection of RGB cells. Most cellular automa use cells. In this, each individual cell is an RGB. So it's a collection of three numbers in each cell. 24 bits, so red, green, and blue, each is 8-bit. Cellular automa work by an update rule. The update rule basically takes the current image that you have and modifies it into the next image. And that's how you get the frames that make up the animated sequence. The update rule takes the current image, so the current state of the universe, and moves it, transforms it into the next frame. Now there is, it's instantaneous, so this is like double buffering in animation. The current grid completely transforms into the upgraded grid. The order that you update these pixels don't matter because as you're updating pixels near the top or near the bottom or in the middle, wherever you want to change them, they're not affecting the pixels around them until the next frame of the animation. Merge life rules come in this hexadecimal form that you see here, the CB97. This is, it looks like a GUID somewhat, except the hyphens are in different spots in a GUID. Uh, but it's, if you're not familiar with a GUID, don't worry, it has no relation to merge life. That rule is what defines how to change one frame into another. And as you can tell, there's a tremendous number of rules. Most of them are pretty useless. The genetic algorithm searches through a large number of these and finds interesting ones that actually display animated sequences that sometimes have spaceships or other, other interesting animations. A rule set for Merge Life has eight subrules, and those are what the hyphens are for. Those four-digit hexadecimal numbers, those are what those each of those 16-bit hexadecimal numbers, those are the eight subrules that make up the Merge Life rule. The way that Merge Life works is each pixel on the screen is converging to one of eight key colors. And those key colors are defined by those, those hyphenated hexadecimal numbers. Which key color it's converging towards is the first two digits of each of those four. We'll see more about this in a moment. And how quickly it converges to that key color is controlled by the last two digits. So CB is going to de determine for that, first, for that first one, the CB determines which of the eight key colors we're converging towards and then 97, that determines how quickly we're converging towards it. Now, as you converge towards a particular key color, you might have a different rule apply to you. So it's not like each of the pixels are, are set to one key color, otherwise it would very quickly converge to a, to a solid image. The rules that apply to each pixel change from frame to frame, from step to step. These are the key colors. There are eight of them, and they're fairly basic color, the, the ones that you see here. And I also have the RGB value. We're using very traditional RGB encoding from 0 to 255 for 24-bit color, and we'll see more about these as we go through. But each of those eight rules in that hexadecimal string that you saw does directly line up to one of these. So the first one lines up to black, the second to red, and so on. Now, a rule is not necessarily going to show black. There's a way to override that, because to be Turing complete, so to be able to do things like um, create universal Turing machines in this, and also to support Conway's Game of Life, the original, we do need ways to have more than one color, like black, maybe represented by rule one and also by a different rule. 
we can we can do that and we'll see how that is encoded. So this is the merge life sub rule format. So the rule that whole entire hexadecimal string that defines the entire rule and I have lots of those on my website. You can see different different animated effects produced with merge life. But each sub rule is made up of two 8-bit hex numbers. For example, CB97. Like I said, the first one specifies when the rule applies. The second one specifies what the rule actually does. And what they do is very simple. The, it, they converge to one of the key colors. Only one rule applies to each pixel per update frame. This is what a decoded merge life rule looks like. And I also have this, uh, this, this is essentially generated with a JavaScript program that I have on my website. So you can enter, if you're trying to implement Merge Life in, in a different way, you can enter the rule like you see up there and it will decode it for you. That's very useful to check to cut the code to make sure it's performing like the paper that I published on this. But this is showing you, and this is really how simple a Merge Life rule is for each pixel you calculate a neighbor count. That's basically the uh, the eight pixels that go right around it, the, the north, south, east, west, and then the the, the um, northeast, northwest, so on. The So you've got the, the four cardinal directions and then the four in between it. Those are the eight pixels that go around it. You count up the intensities, and I'll show that in a moment, and that's what the range is for. If the intensity that you get is within any of those ranges, that is the rule that applies. And then the percent, forget what the negative percents mean for a second, but just the percent 83. So if the first rule applied, the 0 to 215, then the, the color for that pixel would move 83% of the way to blue from where it was for that particular frame. Since these are ranges and each pixel has a specific neighbor count, only one of these rules is really going to apply. So it is whatever the key color is, and you'll see there's some duplicates, so there's two blues. That's really what the negative is for. Any, any negative... Um, percent is automatically mapped to the preceding color. So that's uh, the preceding color in, the, in that list that I just showed you before. We'll see more of that in a second. But this is this is basically it. This is not that different from Conway's Game of Life, where the neighbor count determines if a cell is alive or dead. In Merge Life, cells are not alive or dead. They are continuous, so they're a range of colors. So the neighbor count, which is the range, that just counts the intensity of the pixels around it and then determines which of the key colors that pixel should move towards. And that's it. That's all there really is to Merge Life. The rest of this is just decoding that hexadecimal string and showing you how we count the neighbors. So let's see how we would... Um, deal with the neighbor count. So we're going to consider a sub rule and we're going to consider how that works with the neighbor count. So CB97. CB, that's hexadecimal. So the first one, the first two digits, you always decode as an unsigned number. You don't do two's complement. The second two, you do do a two's complement, so you get that negative. But 203, you just decode, or CB, you decode that to 203. And then you multiply 203 by 8, which gives you 1624. The reason you multiply it by 8 is because we don't, we're trying to save bits here so that the hexadecimal string is not that long. And you can't have, you can't support every single neighbor count as a result. These, these go up in increments. The granularity is increments of eight. But this lets us support the entire range of neighbor counts that would actually be possible from the eight surrounding pixels. So that's just defined by the rule that I created for Merge Life. It's multiplied by eight. And this specifies the upper range of one of those subrules. So the upper range, 1624, is for this subrule. The lower part of the range, that gets defined by the previous subrule. We'll, we'll see how that fits in in a second. So I decoded the first one into 1624. That's the alpha column that you see there. Then I decode the next one, 848. And that's just the, that's the next two, the, the next set of four hexadecimal digits. So we just work our way from the left to the right of the merge life update rule, and we get all of these numbers. These are all of the alphas. Those are the high 
limit of the range for which each of these rules apply. These are going, this is going to eventually become the eight rules. The next thing that you need to do here is you need to be able to see what the low end of the range is. And the low of the end of the range is just the next lower sub rule. So to do this, we need to sort this column. And when you sort them, there I have them all nice and sorted, 216, 320, 6, 632, and so on. They're in order. So now they're in order by alpha. The index on the far left is no longer in order because it just came along as we as we reordered them. So the black one that was 1624 that we looked at individually is now at the bottom. And then the ranges, so the 216 goes from 0 to 215. So anything from 0 to 215 inclusive is going to converge to blue. So the range, that's the range for the neighbor count. And we'll see the neighbor count, how you calculate that in just a second. It's just the intensity of the pixels around it. Now that you have all of this there, you, you have a complete set of knowing when each rule applies. Now we need to look at the next two bytes, uh, or the next two digits of each of those rules. That's the octet two. Octet one was the range. Octet two is the, the next one. Notice we have the 6a, aa, e8, those are all the, the numbers, the hexadecimal numbers from the update rule. We decode those into decimal numbers, and we use two's complement, so they are signed numbers. That's how we get the negative into there to allow us to map to other, other colors. So that's decoded all of those. Those will eventually become the percents. We're going to have to do a multiplication just like we did to move the range that we want. But first, let's go ahead and map the key colors. So all the ones that have a negative, they're going to get mapped to another color. That is necessary so that you can have more than one way to get to a specific color. If I didn't have that, I could actually not represent Conway's Game of Life in this algorithm. And that's important for Turing completeness. I'd have just as soon not had the negative numbers in there. It's, it's additional complexity, but it's a, it's a great way to keep those hexadecimal strings pretty simple and just map different colors to, to other ones. I might do a video showing how Conway's Game of Life is represented in this, and that would make that quite, quite evident. But if you look at the index color, so the original color, anything that does not have a negative in front of it, the index color and key color are the same thing. There's no chain. If it is negative, then it moves to the next indexed key, um, key color. So yellow comes right before blue. So the fact that index 4 had a negative, it just means that that gets mapped to blue. So the, the key colors at the right, those are the resulting key colors that they truly are. And then to decode the percent, since you've got negative percents, um, we don't use, the negative was just a flag to tell us if the color needs to be remapped. So if the octet two is greater than zero, then the percent is going to be the octet two divided by 127. If octet two is less than zero, then it's the absolute value divided by 128. And that moves these numbers into a 0 to 100 range. Again, this is just like what we did in the range. We're doing the we're doing the division here just just so that we don't have to use up enough bits to truly represent the entire the entire range of percent. So using all of this, we can now get to that table that I originally showed you. So this is this is the expanded update rule, and you can see one of these for any of these by looking at the the merge life website that I have that has a JavaScript decoder. So now that we have this, let's see how we can actually transform one pixel into the next. So merge life, the way it works for neighbor counts is we merge the grid. You can think of this almost like a grayscale. You've got red, green, and blue, 10, 20, 30 on the, the very left. So these, the left is the true RGB grid. Basically take the average of each of those. It's a lot like a grayscale, except grayscale, if you look it up in Wikipedia, is actually a weighted average. So you don't, red, green, and blue don't come across as the same intensities in a grayscale, whereas in Merge Life, they're, it's just a simple average. So if you add 10, 20, and 30, you end up with, with 60, divide that by three, and you get the average, or the merged value, that's where it gets its name, is 20. So you essentially take it to the merged grid. The merged grid that you see on the right 
that is going to be used for neighbor counts. So those are essentially the intensities of the color. This also gives you the background color for Merge Life. So now let's see how we'll do a neighbor count. Look at that cyan pixel there, the 10. This is using what's called a more neighborhood. So you have that yellow ring of pixels around the 10. That becomes the, the neighbor count. You add up all those values and you get 97. The 97 is what is used to tell which of those eight rules you're going to apply to this. And you just look back at this, you can see that it, the first rule is going to apply because we're in the range 0 to 215. And the way that we do this is we, the rule stated that we would move towards blue by 83%. So to do that, we, we only use the merged grid to calculate the neighbors. Once that's done, we move back to the original RGB. So we have to calculate the delta value, the amount that the red, green, and blue will change. So we look at how far away we are from the blue that we want to get to. So 0 minus 10, 0 minus 10 again, and 255 minus 10, 0, 0, 255, that's the value for blue, because blue has 0 red, 0 green, and 255 blue. We take the distance between where we currently were, that cell was currently at 10, 10, 10, so it would have been a gray, and we multiply that by 0.83, which is the percent that we want to move by, and that gives us a delta of negative 8 in each of the, at the red and the green, and a positive 203 that we move in blue. So then the new values, we just we just add those deltas on to the current 10, 10, 10, that is the, the pixel that that previous pixel was at, and we do 2, 2, and 2, 3, 2, 1, 3 to the new grid that is being created. We do this for every single cell. Since the old grid and the new grid are completely independent of, of each other, this is an embarrassingly parallel operation. So you could do this, you could calculate a merge life update completely parallel and just separate those pixels out because the the work that you're doing for an update has no influence on the neighboring pixels until you get to the next update step. Now sometimes there are not eight neighbors, so what do you do in this case? And this was something that was not defined in Conway's Game of Life and there's a, various ways that that was solved such as wrapping around, but what you do in Merge Life, I did define this, you take the mode of this uh, grid. And mode is just the statistical term for what value occurs the most commonly. The value that occurs the most um, commonly in this is 20. So 20 is the background intensity for this. Because you have two rows of 20s on the bottom and then the, the cyan pixel that we're updating, that is also a 20. So 20 will be the background. You can see here in a merge life grid, green or the intensity of that green would be the background color. So Merge Life does have a concept of a background color, but it has nothing to do with anything other than dealing with those off-screen pixels. So what we end up doing is creating a ring around the Merge Life grid. So you can tell we used to be 4x4. Four four. We just added that additional box around the whole thing that is all 20s. And now we have eight neighbors. So in Merge Life, you always, always have eight neighbors and you add up all of those values, and now you have a value of 112 for that particular um, cyan pixel. I found that this gives a lot more consistent results. That way you've always got a background and you treat off the grid as just perpetually being part of the background. Now the background color in Merge Life can change if the dynamic of the, of the grid changes so that 20 is no longer the most common color, and that does happen sometimes in Merge Life, but usually the background color stabilizes pretty quickly. But that doesn't have to be the case. Now you just do this for every single pixel. You've seen how to update the RGB values. This is how you do an update in Merge Life. Thank you for watching this video. There will be additional videos on Merge Life and other AI topics that I find interesting, as well as artificial life. If you find this interesting, please subscribe to my YouTube channel.